Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and this month we are piecing this beautiful Dresden ring within a ring. We're gonna make a small little mini Dresden ring and then we're gonna make an outer Dresden ring and these two are gonna fit perfectly inside of one another. So for this block you're gonna need two three inch strips. You can see I used pink and purple. Then you're going to need a two and a half inch strip in your contrasting color. So in this case, that's blue. In the block, I did yellow. And then you'll need one more little mini strip, and that's going to be cut two inches wide. So just refer to that so you know how to cut your strips. And now let's cut out our petals. So we are using Dresden plate template number one from our Dresden plate template set. And I am going to use this narrow edge of that template to cut my two narrow strips. So I'm going to line this up so that I have that narrow edge lined up with the top of that two inch strip. And that's how I'm going to cut my smallest petal shapes. And you might be wondering what is the smallest petal that you can cut with this template and I pretty much tested this and found a two inch strip is about the absolute narrowest strip that you can use. So that is how you're gonna cut that shape. Now you're gonna do the exact same thing with your two and a half inch strip. You're working off of that narrow edge of that template number one. So I'll line it up here just like this. And if you also wanna use the lines that are etched on the ruler, we're lining up that two and a half inch line and that narrowest edge in this particular strip because this is a two and a half inch wide strip and I can just cut to both sides. Be very careful when you're not cutting with your dominant hand, of course. There we go. So that is the shapes I'm going to cut for the inside ring and you're going to need four of each color. All right, so now let's cut our biggest shapes together. And this is gonna be really different. I've already cut out most of my pink, so I'll just work off of this strip. And here's the big, <laughs> here's the big deal. And that is we're gonna use the opposite side of the template. We're gonna be using the wide side of the template in order to cut these outer petal shapes. The reason why we need to do that is because that is the bigger size. That's a bigger shape that's going to create our maximum sized Dresden ring. So in this case, I've already cut a few. So I'm gonna flip this over so it's like this. In this case, I'm lining up that nice wide edge with the bottom edge of my strip. Remember, these strips are cut three inches wide. Carefully cut across. Carefully cut off that little schniblet. There we go. So that's how I'm going to cut both the pink and purple for these petals. Again, you're gonna need four of each because we're creating an eight petal Dresden. So once you get your petals cut, the next step is gonna be the same for all of them. We're gonna take them and fold them in half, right sides together. And I have found it actually can save some time to just go on ahead and press that, create a nice firm crease line right down the center. Now you're gonna take this to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch from that folded edge and you're gonna stitch a quarter inch away from this wide side of our petal. You're gonna backstitch the beginning and the end and here's what it looks like whenever you get that stitched. And this is what I've done with all of my petals. I have done that little bit of stitching on that long edge on all of them. Okay, now we're gonna take it and we're gonna trim up that little edge. So from that fold. I'm just going to start at the stitching, clip over, and then I'm going to get my fingers inside of that and finger press it open. That little seam. There we go. And you don't have to do that, but I just like to because it just flattens everything else nicely. All right, so now we're going to turn it right side out. There we go. And we start to see our little itsy bitsy mini Dresden ring shape, our little petal shape. Let me use the tips of my scissors. I just hold them together and poke at that and it really nicely turns all the way around. There we go. And now this is the main reason why I like to fold that in half, the petal in half from the beginning, is I have a nice crease line now right down the middle. I can line up this seam line I just stitched with that crease line I pressed in and have a really nice perfect symmetrical petal shape. I give that a nice solid press. 
And I always press with a hot dry iron. Of course, use whatever you prefer, but I find that that works best for this kind of thing. And I do start to impress my fabric before I start cutting, and that kind of generally makes it a little easier to work with. Okay, so that is how we're gonna prep up the outer point of our petal shape. But you can see I have octagons to the inside. Remember that this is a big point of our Dresden rings is that we can finish both sides of these petals, not just the outside, but also the inside too. So we don't need to have those circles popped up on top, which, you know, the circles aren't bad, but it's just nice to have them, you know, really light. I, I just find that these are a lot more lightweight, you know, they're just very delicate and open. And I love that. So in this case, I turned all of these edges to the inside. I just folded that under a quarter inch. So let me show you how I'm going to do that next. Now the last step to preparing our petals is to fold up this bottom edge. And you can see I've done this on the two smallest petals. On these biggest petals, you're going to need to trim off this little flap. It just extends a little long and it can get in the way of folding that bottom edge up. Now I've made a little turning template here. This is just a piece of freezer paper that I've marked a quarter inch line, a quarter inch from the edge. I'm just going to line that up with where I think it'll work out, where I can fold that fabric up to that marked line. That looks pretty good. And this helps, and this works really well, if you have starched and pressed your fabric so it's nice and stiff before you cut. Uh, so I can just fold that over and give it a good press, and it's going to hold in place. It's going to hold its shape just like so. And I'll do that with this less purple one. Just kind of eyeball where to put that. And then if you need to nudge it, you can. You can shift it up a little bit or down a little bit, just so that way you press up a nice consistent quarter inch of the fabric over to the wrong side. And what this is gonna do, this is going to finish the inside edge. This is what gives us this octagon effect to the inside on both of these Dresden rings. Okay. So now it's time to piece these together in sets of two. So whatever set that you, like if you set the pink down first and then put the purple on top, make sure to do all of them the same way consistently. Piece them together into sets of two and then piece those sets together. And there you can see half of my ring is put together just like so. I'll continue piecing the other half and I'll have that one together. Now, the smallest pieces are a little different because we cut the blue a little bit bigger and the pink a little smaller, but we made sure to cut from the same bottom edge. So this means that we need to piece from that bottom edge. So when you fold this over, make sure that you're lining up and you begin stitching. I'm gonna flip this over so you can see, I'm gonna begin stitching here, back stitch and stitch on down. And that's very, very important because if you pieced it this way, lining up those outer edges, it wouldn't work. Your Dresden ring would not turn into a Dresden ring. It just, it just wouldn't work out. Uh, you want to make sure to line up those inside edges and piece from there. And here's what that's going to look like. You can see that's how that was pieced, starting from the inside, coming out. I have folded that seam allowance open and you can see that you have a seam allowance extending here on that blue. This is what you want to do is just fold it over and I press that open and now I'm going to press it to one side because most likely I'm going to end up quilting this on my long arm and I have found recently that I kind of want those seam allowances pressed to one side when I'm quilting on my long arm. There we go. So I'm going to piece all of those together in sets of two. Here you can see what they look like when they start coming together. That's half of the ring. And I'm going to finish up piecing that one together, but you can see how that comes together so nicely. Okay, when it comes to placing this on your background fabric, I cut my background fabric 13 inches, 14 inches, something like that. Fold it in half both ways to create these crease lines. I lined up the points of my rings with those crease lines. 
and you can see that one is going to nest within the other just exactly right. Now, if it's a little off, just kind of nudge, <laughs> nudge that outer ring outward a little bit and you'll have plenty of space. Uh, but I just glue that down with my little bottle, little micro tip bottle of Elmer's glue. I glue that down and then when I'm ready, I'm going to do a little line of stitching about uh, a little bit less than an eighth of an inch all the way around all of these edges. So all of these folded edges to the outside and inside and on the outer ring as well. So that is it for our ring within a ring. I hope you enjoyed learning how to piece this with me today. You can find your Dresden templates and create this super cute double Dresden ring with me. Come and check it out at leahday.com slash Dresden.